So you're much. putting lettuce in a microwave? Well, not just lettuce. It was lettuce and other ingredients. What else? Sliced tomato? Carrot, sliced tomato. Oh, bit beautiful. Of true. Some nice microwaved carrot. Two slices of bread. You're a sicko. <laughs> on Triple J. Good afternoon. Michael Hing and Lewis Hobber hanging out with you on a Tuesday for the very last time. Lewis, today is our very final edition of Game Show Tuesday. Yes, we'll be saying goodbye to one of the greatest games ever invented, Listful Thinking. We'll be opening up the Hobber and Incorporated prize vault for one final time. Uh, we may even give away the combination so that um, enthusiastic uh, grave robbers can come and pick at our bones after we've left. Yes. Um, now, if you want to play Listful Thinking, 043975 we do have a special surprise in store. Uh, you can win tickets this week to our live tour that is going still to Melbourne, Bendigo, uh, Canberra, Brisbane and Newcastle, the greatest city in the world, 043975 if you want to play. Also, Lewis, today we need to find out where we're going to put our statues that are definitely being made by a professional <laughs> sculptor. Yeah, we're putting the car before the horse here. Um, we don't have the statues yet, but we we did chat to a sculptor yesterday. He reckons that he could have them whipped up in no time. Mm. So now we're going to find a location and um, hope that we're just going to, you know, manifest, yeah. I guess. If you think your town or city, your uh, home could be a home to these statues, 043975755. Right Keep now. in mind, you don't know how good they're going to be yet. None of us do. Yeah, they could be amazing. They could be amazing. They, I mean, they could be terrible, but they could be amazing. It's a gamble. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's all happening today right now. This is Teen Jesus and the Gene Teasers. Started off there with Teen Jesus and the Gene Teasers. I used to be fun. Uh, after that, you heard Glass Animals back from 2014. Gooey, the name of that one. And just then, JK47 and Jay Orient with Rain. Uh, you are with Hobber and Hing on Triple J. And Hing is uh, exciting news if you are a fan of Jungle as much as I am. <laughs> Their new album, Volcano, is coming out at the end of the week, uh, which we've been hearing some tracks from, like their Eric the Architect one, Candle Flame, really like that. Uh, but the new album is not enough. They have announced that they're going to be visiting Australia, which is super exciting. They're a really fun group to see live. Uh, we'll give you the details on that in just a moment. Right now, though, this is a song Billie Eilish wrote for the Barbie soundtrack, What Was I Made For? Hmm. And Triple J. That is the Ryan's minivan. I love that song. And Triple J. Before that, you heard Billie Eilish with What Was I Made For? What Was I Made For? Um, you're with Hopper and Hing. And Lewis, uh, yeah. we were just talking about uh, brand new music from Jungle. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. No. Yeah, or tour. Yeah, new tour, not yeah. new music. Oh, well, they're going to be playing from... music. <laughs> they're going to be playing music. Are we playing music? Sure. Uh, you're right. Jungle. T. Lewis, Jungle's brand new album. Oh, yeah. Comes out this Friday, August 11, actually. So true. So that's, I guess that's some sort of new music. <laughs> if you, if you must, if you do, ref, if you want to refuse to acknowledge that you misspoke or got it wrong, that's fine. But we were talking about their new tour, which was just announced today, Michael. That's the news. Yes. The new news. The new news, which was just announced today. Jungle. Um, in celebration of the album, which we've known about for some time, I mm -hmm. uh, have just announced today that they are going to be coming to the country not next week, not next month, mm -hmm. but next May. May 2024. Mm -hmm. What are you up to in May 2024? Friday, May 17th, they're coming Got out. Got plans? Uh, Friday, May 17th, 2024. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any plans? If not... Maybe you could go see them in Nam, Melbourne at Festival Hall. Uh, on the 19th of May, 2024, mm -hmm. the Engine Brisbane, Fortitude Musical. And once again in May 22nd, that is the year 2024. That is 10-ish months away. What are we thinking? Nine months away from now? If you just got pregnant, you could probably have the baby before this tour starts. I, mean, I imagine you probably won't want to go well, I mean, to the shows because you'll have a one-month-old or whatever. Yeah, you might want to get looked after. Anyway, May 22nd, uh, Horton Pavilion, Eora, Sydney. So mm -hmm. a fair bit of time to get your head around that one, mm -hmm. uh, but you will have plenty of time to get excited about their Do album. Do you you'll go to that? Because, like, you go to a lot of gigs and stuff, but we won't uh -huh. be working here anymore then. Do you think I'll stop liking music? No, uh, I'll stop liking Thursday. music, but maybe the... 
Do you reckon the um, once we leave here, do you think you'll still have the, the, the need to want to go out and watch gigs or...? Yes. But, yes, I do, yeah. <laughs> you? Because I, I guess once you leave here, the important thing is, Lewis, you probably will have to start paying for shows as well. Well, no, we never discussed that. <laughs> we never discussed that. Uh, I will start saving because I do have approximately nine months to save up for this jungle gig in 2024. <laughs> Here is a song from their forthcoming album, back on 74. Little TJ with Stressed featuring Summer Walker. And uh, we also played some Jungle back on 74 from their new album, Volcano, Michael, coming out on Friday, some new music. I would say it's some new music, actually, <laughs> that Jungle is uh, well, releasing on Friday. Yep. Haven't uh, heard it yet, but it's on the way. But Jungle is also doing a tour, did you know, Lewis? Is that right? Yeah, they're doing a tour is that in May of 2024. Today? Huh. And, uh, look, I mean, obviously, we could try and get free tickets to it, but by there, we'll be all washed up. He'll know <laughs> <laughs> if Jungle would respect us. Um, now, Lewis, it is Tuesday, uh-huh. uh, our very final Tuesday of our show, before we uh, before we hang up the old headphones and microphones. And that means we're doing our very final game show Tuesday. And to do that, Lewis, mm. you and I need to tell the people what they're playing for. Could you, you say please? what game we're playing? Oh, you can do that first. Sorry. Uh, yes, Lewis, we're <laughs> playing Listful Thinking. Listful Thinking. Thought we might get it on our, fi- on our final week, but not not just yet. Sorry, close. Yeah, sorry. You said you said it just before we turned the mics on. He said, "Let me get the the vault for us." So oh yeah, I yeah that that's too. what we're doing. Now, so. Michael, guess what we do next? Are we opening up the prize vault? We're please? opening up the prize vault, Michael. We're opening up the prize vault. Mm-hmm. Shall we do it? Yes. <laughs> what can people play for today, Lewis? So glad that you asked. Today, inside the Hobber and Incorporated Prize Vault, we have the Golden Ham Chain Key Ring. We also have a Golden Ham Shake Sweater. And finally, if you are in Newcastle, Bendigo, Canberra, Brisbane or Melbourne... Mm-hmm. Then you could be playing for tickets to come and see Hover and Hing live in concert. There'll be no musical instruments, just the concert of our beautiful voices together as one All right. on the last show ever tour. Exactly. If you want to play, 0439 757 555. The game is simple. You just have to name 10 things in the category that we give you in under 60 seconds. It sounds easy, but I think we've had maybe like <laughs> six winners in the... Six months we've been playing this game. But we'll see if uh, there are any today. If you would like to play, this is the last time we will ever play Listful Thinking. Today's the final Tuesday for us. 0439 75 7555. We'll be jumping into the prize vault after this from Greta Stanley. Greta Stanley on Triple J. It's cool to be in love. Uh, you are with Hopper and Hing, and I think it's cool to do this. Listful Thinking. Yes, we are playing Listful Thinking for the very final time. Today is the last day to open up the vault and get involved in Game Show Tuesday. Listful Thinking, we'll be asking you, giving you a category. You have to name 10 things in that category. And if you can do it, you get to choose from the prize vault. Now, our first caller today uh, from the nation's beating heart of Mm -hmm. Canberra is Abby. G'day, Abby. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Um, very well, very, very well. well. Uh, now, Abby, have you heard Listful Thinking before? Yes, I have. Okay, great. So you need to name 10 things in under 60 seconds in the category that we give you. Uh, what, what do you want to be playing for today, Abby? Um, I'm going to go for the tickets. Ooh, oh, tickets to Canberra. All right. Uh, tickets to the Canberra show. Uh, we are going to Canberra in September to do our final last show, one of many. Yep. And um, excited yeah. about that. We were in Canberra recently to do the biggest radio show of all time. Um, yeah, yeah, that, I missed that on that one, unfortunately. Yeah, that's okay. It was, I mean, it was so big. Um, there wouldn't have been room for you. Um, uh, but, fair enough. All right, here we go. Are you ready to play? Yes. Okay, as soon as we give you your time, I mean, as soon as we give you your category, your time will start. Um, all right, Abby from Canberra, your category is television game shows. <laughs> Uh, the Price is Right. Yes. Um, family Feud. Yes. Um, That's two. That's two. Oh, shit. Um, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, 
Um, there's one with the big spinny thing. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Yes. yes. They don't have to be current ones. They can be old ones as well. The one where the question oh. is the answer. <laughs> oh, man. I'm totally blanking. That's, That's okay. okay. You it was host, it. hosted by Alex Trebek for many years in America. Uh, Begins with a J. No, uh, yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> Anything that involves Burjo. <laughs> okay. okay. What about oh, um, the kids' ones? Ten yep. Seconds. The kids' ones? You know, any ones that were for kids in the afternoons. Oh, really? God, you're, you're really trying to carry this for me, aren't We're you? We're doing our best. We're doing our best, Yeah, you are. I'm really not. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think, um, That might be the worst that anyone's ever done. Not quite. No, no not oh, quite. No, no, no. no two is pretty bad. I don't know that three, anyone's Three, three. Didn't we get three? to three? I think we got, oh, yeah, three, two and a half, yeah, one look, with a clue. Yeah, yeah, one with the big spinny yeah. wheel. <laughs> But I'll, I'll take that. No, it's okay. You missed a couple of big ones. Obviously, Jeopardy. I think Lewis was fishing for Burjo's catchphrase. Yes, anything with Burjo. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. the kids' ones, what are we talking there? Amazing. Yep. Um, We've accepted that. Yeah. Uh, Look, that one where you do like hopscotch up the wind, up sure. the thing. Oh, go, sure. go, stop. Um, go, go, stop. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Deal or no deal. That would have worked. Um, yeah. Who oh, wants to be a millionaire? Yeah. Yeah. Chase. Yeah. I mean, look, right, look right. we don't have to all rub right. it out. We get it. We get it. <laughs> Abby, I feel like it. It's our last day. We should just give you the prize anyway because, you know, we can just give away whatever we want now. They can't do anything, you know? Yeah, right. Totally. <laughs> I agree. You want, you want to give I mean, stuff everyone else. With respect. Yes. That was one of the worst versions yeah. of listful thinking no, we've ever had. I understand. And you I want to go around. a way to go out. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, actually let's do this. Okay. okay. Here's what we're going to do. Can you bring up another caller? Yes, I can. Hello. Hang on. Abby, wait One there. Second. Okay. Angus, are you there? Angus in Newcastle, are you there? Angus. Talk to me, Angus. No, nope, Angus is hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Angus is gone. <laughs> well, um, I don't know what your idea was. My idea was next. I was going to get Angus to play for both of them. Oh, you that know? is exciting. Double or nothing. All right. You know, we get Angus on. <laughs> okay, you stick on the line, Abby. Um, I... Do we have Angus? Whoa, what do we think? No. We're okay. going to put on a song and then we'll see if someone can play f- for, for, Abby. for the whole team. We're, for the adding, whole t- we're adding a prize. Exactly. It's a prize jackpot. It's a second prize. It's going to jackpot. I and love it. Win as well. I love it. <laughs> this is What's So Not. <laughs> that is What's So Not on Triple J. Teaming up with Daniel Johns of Silver Chair fame. Ever heard of him? I have. Uh, of that course. track was called Be OK Again. Do you know where he's from? The greatest city in the world. Of course he is. Uh, now, we're doing, we're doing Blissful Thinking um, and we just had Abby on from Canberra. Abby, you still there? Uh, Abby, yeah. Abby uh, we heard your topic was game shows. You got to two and a half and it was pretty dismal. But it's our last I day agree. doing this. It's our, doing, it's our last day doing this, Abby, and you seem to have a pretty good attitude about failure. So <laughs> we want to give you a second chance to win the tickets to the Canberra show. Okay. But obviously we can't trust you to win. We've given you opportunity and you've absolutely flubbed it. <laughs> So, yeah. Lewis, <laughs> this feels very cruel now. It feels like no. you know, Michael's kept you around to, to, keep going. to give you a chance but also to really just berate you. Yeah, but also, Abby, I think Abby understands. <laughs> so, uh, totally, totally get it. Okay. So, here's what we're going to do. We have the line, Angus. He dropped out before, but he's back. Angus from Newcastle, are you there? What's going on, boys? There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Angus, you're going to play Blissful Thinking and you're going to be playing not just for yourself but also for Abby and Canberra. So, if you can win this... Abby and Canberra gets the tickets as well. So do you understand the stakes of what you're playing for? Yeah, they're pretty high. Okay. Angus, have you selected your prize from the Hobber and Hing prize showcase? Yeah, the ticket. Oh, oh he wants the ticket. To, New- to the Newcastle show, I imagine? Yeah, yeah, the Peewee show. Okay, okay. The okay. tickets are like 49 bucks each as well, you know what I mean? This is... All right. It's a great prize. All right. Ready? Blissful thinking. Peter playing from Newcastle. Your challenge is to name 10 things in a category in under 60 seconds. Your time will begin as soon as we give you your category. Angus from Newcastle, are you ready to play? Yeah, let's go, boys. All right, Angus from Newcastle. Because this is the final day of Game Show Tuesday, the final day of listful thinking. Your topic is, would you please name for me 10 classic Hobber and Hing bits? Go. Uh, simply the jet. Yes. Uh, the Friday Horn. Yep. Yep. Uh, the world's biggest radio show. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. In Canberra. Yes. 
Fading uh, Olympian? Yes. Yes, Fading Olympian, that's four. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, are you boys is a stitch up. <laughs> Um, you got this, Angus. You got this. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Six more to go. Nah. No. I can't figure anything here. Really? And yet he wanted tickets <laughs> to the show. Don't forget, you just did nothing at all. You're not not even no, the game you're playing nah. right now. <laughs> oh, Angus. Oh, nah, Angus. Sorry, lads, I'm out. Oh, Angus. Started off with some confidence <laughs> and then really shut the bed. Um, Angus, thank you for playing. Um, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, Abby in Canberra, I'm what so do you think sorry, about Ab- Angus's performance? I'm so sorry, Abby in Canberra. Might have been, might have been worse it was. than mine simply because of how, how high the stakes were. <laughs> the stakes were. Uh, but forgiven, forgiven. Wow. Well. Uh, well, well done, everybody. I mean, it's, I think it's really fitting that this is how this segment ends. Well, no, I, there's actually one more person that we want to have on. Okay. After this. That is Stephen on Triple J with Hello, Goodbye. You are with Hobber and Hing and Lewis. We're doing listful thinking. I would say uh, this is really going out with, frankly, a whimper right now. Yeah. We on- had two listeners. Uh, they, and and they, they had pretty easy topics, I thought. <laughs> yeah. And they flubbed them both. <laughs> yeah, pretty all-time all time low for the segment. <laughs> but I'm hoping we can pull it back because right now, joining us on the line is a man infamous for his work on Listful Thinking. Mm-hmm. This was what happened the very first time he played Listful Thinking and we gave him the category 10 Types of Cheese. Uh, provolone? Bro, are you reading off? You are reading off a list. Are you giggling me? You, that is an outrage. No, 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 no. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot of P cheeses there have? that came out at the same time. Have? You are cheating. Oh, if you don't know how to say... If you, no. <laughs> this is a, if you can't pronounce provolone, you are reading it off a list. There was a lot of accusations that he was, in fact, a cheat. Jameson from Sydney joins us back at the line. G'day, Jameson. <laughs> Boys, how are we? Very well. <laughs> nice to have the old cheese cheater back on the line. The champion's cheat has returned to his third and final crack at immortality. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> now, after the cheese cheating debacle, we went through a big thing. You had your Italian girlfriend come mm-hmm. on and explain how you never knew how to apl- uh, say Pronounce Italian words. words. It was a whole to do. We gave you another go with the ten types of pastas, and then uh-huh. we got caught on whether or not Rizzoni was a pasta. Yes, yes. yes. The whole, I mean, every time you come on, there's a scandal. There's always controversy. Uh, but we thought we couldn't let you go. We couldn't let the segment go without giving Jameson, as you say, one more crack at infamy. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> now, all right. So, Jameson, if I, let me just say this, Jameson, as well. If you think it's funny to cheat. <laughs> on this one, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> Having said that. Having said that. No, it would be Michael. Nice, it wouldn't be nice to end on a win if we just had two flops. Yeah, but I think you... I've, I've learned my lesson. I've I, learned my lesson. Have you? Have you, though? I have. Let's find I out. Have. We do it the hard way. Okay, let's play. Listful Thinking! Our competitor today is Jameson from Sydney, a notorious cheat. <laughs> Jameson. Uh, Jameson, what do you want to play for today? What prize do you want, aside from immortality? Oh, I mean, I, I did go to your show last week, boys. So, oh. uh, you know, good, good to see you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want? Uh, do you want a? Do you want a sweater? Do you want a the dating cards? Well, what are you after? The, the golden handshake earring? We're sending the bar a little low. I think there's actually um, I think there's a wedding coming up. Oh, he wants to play for tickets to the wedding. Like- he wants okay. to put tickets to the wedding back on the list. All right, all right. We'll work something out, Jameson. We'll work something out. <laughs> Interesting. If you can win. I No, I, I, want, an, I want a commitment. What are we, what are we Honestly, playing for here? Honestly, look, I would love for Jameson to be able to come to the wedding. Obviously, I have to run it by my fiancé. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So tickets to the wedding or a sweater. Yeah. We'll see which one he can yes. get. <laughs> yes. Get over the line. Get over the line. With management and uh, also done. my fiancé. Okay. <laughs> now, Jameson. <clears throat> Your time will begin as soon as we give you your category. Let's do it. Okay. Your category is 
deli meats. Oh, salami. Yes. Mo- mortadella. Yes. Ham. Yes. yes. Prosciutto. Yes. Ooh. Um. Uh. Copper. That's that's one. <laughs> okay. Sure. All right. We'll look okay, that five. up. Five. Twiggy sticks. Yes, yes Twiggies. Yes, that's six. Yep. Ro- roast beef. Yeah, yeah, I'd okay. Say, okay, yep. Seven. Oh, copper is one, yes. That's a seven, you're on. 30 seconds. Mortadella. You've, You've already, already said, said it. that. Oh. you got three more to go, Jamison. Oh, I just want to... P- pastrami. Yes. yes. You're on eight. Have you turned it down to see if you can hear if he's cheating? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two more to go. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Immortality might avoid him today. should have cheated, Jameson. <laughs> oh, my God. It's pretty hard when you're not Googling it, isn't it, Jameson? <laughs> my God. Damn, I thought you guys would have, like, given me something easy. We did. I feel like that was pretty easy. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Damn. Corn beef, well, you know. You know? Um, you could have oh, gone with that. liverwurst, tongue, <laughs> oh, spam. Jameson. Well, I think it, as you're probably right. It is fitting that um, we've had three losers <laughs> on, for the last ever go at listful thinking. Oh, this um, is so fun, Jameson. Thank you so much for. Um, hey, look, I may have lost today, but all of Australia loses once you guys ditch the airway. It's oh, a pleasure oh. listening. Jameson, Jameson. You're, you're very kind. Sorry, you're very, very kind. And, um, you've been such a big part of this segment. Yeah. Uh, in many ways, you, in many ways, we can't exist without a mortal enemy. You know, <laughs> what is Sherlock Holmes without Dr. Moriarty? Uh, my pleasure, boys. Thank you, Jameson. Uh, stick on the line. We'll send you out the tickets to that wedding. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Come on, Michael. Give him. Give the guy a go. Nah. <laughs> this is Circle Waves. That's Circle Waves on Triple J. Do you want to talk? And you know, what I want to talk about the fact that. Um, that absolutely no one won listful thinking. You are with Hobart on Triple J and Lewis coming up after 4 o'clock news. We are going to take you back to our live show from Sydney last Wednesday with a special, special guest. Here's the news. Triple J. The beat on this is just so good. These guys know how to make a banger. There is no way not to dance to this. So funky and it absolutely slaps. We love... Triple J Breakfast. It's Dave and Beck on Triple J Brecky, filling in for Bryson and Cheddar. And Beck, I'm sorry to tell you this, but we've got nothing for Wednesday's show. What? Dave, how can this be? Uh, I'm sorry, I just forgot to book stuff. Oh my God, I'm freaking out, Dave. What are we going to do? We don't have a show. Uh, don't freak out because you just got pranked. Oh my God. Dave, why would you do that? Well, because on Wednesday's show, Inspired Unemployed will be dropping by to talk about their brand new prank show on Paramount Plus. Very, very exciting stuff. And also, you've tasked me with a bit of emo homework for emo week. That's right. I've challenged Beck to write some of the most emotional lyrics she could. Beck, how are you going so far? Do you have anything planned? Look, it's going great, Dave. This is what I have so far. <clears throat> My black heart. It's time. Good night. What do we reckon? That's pretty... Yeah, yeah. well, it's good that you have 12 hours to think of something better. Um, we'll catch you on Wednesday's show. Back to the drawing board, I guess. Breakfast. Weekdays from 6 on Triple J. I, I still, here's the thing. Though. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> don't hear the thing. Here's, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. You. Here's the thing. Though, <laughs> Even though How I dare admit you, Michael. That I can tell you think you'd be better at this than me. <laughs> Triple J. Good afternoon. You are joined by Michael Hing and Lewis Hobber hanging out with you on our very final Tuesday show here at Triple J. Before we pack up our bags and uh, leave this place, mm-hmm. never to be seen or heard of again, <laughs> Lewis. Yep. Uh, and today we've got a lot to do. In about half an hour's time, we've got to find out where we can put the statues that we have had commissioned, or we've commissioned from our sculptor friend slash. Um, I guess that makes us kind of like what do you call what do you call patrons? It? Patrons, yes. Yeah, we're it's, like the Medici's. Yeah, yeah. I think but without I, any money, I think I control the um, medieval banks of Venice as well. Too specific. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, if you've got an idea of uh, a city or a town we could maybe install our statues in at short notice, because we are leaving on Thursday. I mean, Venice. Oh four three nine seven five seven triple five. <laughs> um, but Lewis, yes. Coming up, I wanted to take everyone back to our wonderful 
<laughs> show last Wednesday If he night. does say so himself. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, the reason it was wonderful wasn't because of really anything you or I did specifically. Yeah. Um, but because we had so many wonderful guests yes, who came right. and said goodbye to us at the Metro Theatre in Sydney as part of our last show ever tour. In a second, I wanted to take everyone back and reveal behind the curtain... Sorry, I guess in front of the curtain. Reveal in front of the curtain what happened on Wednesday night. We had a special guest who... All I will say is they were... They're a friend of the show. Mm -hmm. They're an award-winning artist. Uh Uh-huh. They're a Logie winner. Yes. And they were part of a diabolical prank on Lewis Hobber. A humiliating prank. (laughs) I don't know if it was... Uh, they made him wet himself. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of humiliating. He was rolling around in a puddle of his own urine. Yeah, well, it was more hoisted on my own petard. Yeah. Uh, but I think I came out pretty shiny at the end of it. More well, on that in a moment. Right now, this is Dominic Fike with Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. Triple, Jeff Fred again. Maria, we've lost dancing. Uh, you also had Dominic Fike in there, Mona Lisa, Hobber and Hing with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hing, as last week, we got to do the first stop of our global tour, uh, the Hobber and Hing last show ever tour, going uh-huh. all around the world. Well, going to the places we can afford to go to, given our very tight travel budget here at the ABC. That's right. Uh, we have done Sydney. That was last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we finish up on the radio on Thursday and then the tour continues. Yes, we're heading off to Melbourne, Brisbane. Canberra, Bendigo and Newcastle. If you want to go see those shows, tickets are available right now from comedy.com.au or you can get the link from our Instagram page at Not Hobber and Hing Official. That's right. Uh, and it was fun. We got to do a lot of stuff and we had to, some guests at the Sydney show that um, once you hear who they are, you will probably understand we can't afford to bring them to every show mm. because these people are big stars. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And they, they can't travel with us, two idiots. And obviously when we want to get a big star to the show. Yeah. We can say, hey, do you want to come be on a show? And they say, ah, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a career. I've got other things. I'm doing other things, you know. But then you go, hey, what if I gave you an opportunity to prank Lewis Hobber? Mm. And they go, ooh la la, yeah. now I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, I don't know. Do you want to reveal who it was uh, that you managed to prank me with? Or do you want to... Do you want to Dance along with your little prank that you managed to. Pull I off. think I think let's let's let people listen along and see if they can at what point they can guess that there's a prank coming up, right? So, because we were doing a Q and A. Basically, people got to write down any questions they wanted, like a little AMA for us. They wrote them on little palm cards. We pulled them out of a little fish tank and uh, we read them out, right? Yep. And then we answered them. And one question that someone genuinely asked was, "Have there been any segments that you guys?" have been obsessed with that have been terrible. Yep. Right, what's the worst segment that someone's ever pitched? That you've ne- that's never made it to air. Yeah, and this was great because there is a particular segment that Lewis has been obsessed with for three and a half years that he's pitched, I would say, a dozen times and has never gotten up. You know, we do lots of little segments here, especially involving guests when they come on. We like mm. to do the play games with them and stuff. And there was one that Lewis was obsessed with and then he decided to explain it to a live audience at the Metro Theatre in Sydney. <laughs> So the idea, cockamamie shark. We all know the word cockamamie. We all use it in a sentence all the time. Oh, that's absolute cockamamie, we say. <laughs> it's a real word. It means, like, nonsense. Look, the idea was, we have her on every week, to sing her own songs, or maybe other songs, but I think her own songs, but with nonsense lyrics. So we'd be like, oh, today it's like a Dr Seuss poem or whatever. You have to sing... One of your many hit songs. Can I also say that Amy is a friend who I socialise with outside of work. I have never mentioned this to her. <laughs> well, that's interesting, Lewis. Because at the Logies on Sunday night... <laughs> I, I, I ran in to Amy Shaw. Um, again, friend of the show, a person we both love, a person we're both huge fans of. She'd, um, she'd just come off stage after winning a f***ing Logie. And I said to her, hey, I reckon I can trick Lewis into telling a story about a segment that he's always wanted to pitch. And I think if I did that, I could get him to say in front of a room full of people, this would definitely work. But the only way we could prove whether or not it would work is if we ran it in front of a live audience. And so to do that, Ladies and gentlemen, everyone else, would you please welcome to the stage, Amy Shaw! 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Amy Shark walked out. Mm-hmm. Um, has she been hiding in an upstairs room? Yes. And uh, hidden away from Lewis Hobber. <laughs> it was genuinely impressive. Thank you. So it much. was very. Um, well, here's the next part, right? Because then yeah. we we were like, well, now I have to go through on my promise. Actually, play the game, Cockamamie Shark, Cockamamie in Shark. front of <laughs> recent. Uh, well, f- you know, uh, Logie winner, yeah. Amy Shark, who just fl- who just flown in for our gig, you know, yeah, and just and, yeah. And really here's the thing: is that it actually would have gone quite well if you weren't such a dead shit, Michael. Well, and I, if you weren't so terrible at the game, Cockamamie Shark, on so many drugs. <laughs> you, how, come on, I was, was on, I was drugged up to my okay. eyeballs on the Wednesday night. I was on all kinds of weird bad chemicals. I was barely awake. Uh, Don't you, blame this on me. You could manage to. Um, Get Amy Shark to the to the gig, but you couldn't remember any of Amy Shark's most famous songs. Have a listen to this. All right, so this is now we we are playing Cockamamie Shark on stage, um, using the ABC's binder of rules as the Cockamamie part of the game, of course. And uh, so Amy Shark is on stage reading the ABC binder of rules, trying to use them to sing her own songs. Now have a listen to see if you can get this song because Michael couldn't and. He really ruined the great game of Cockamamie Shark. So, Amy, any of your songs to the ABC Book of Rules? Okay, this is harder than you think, you know. Like I never thought it through. Okay. <laughs> I can tell. All right. Okay, here we go. It is expected that staff will normally act in accordance with the advice contained in the guidance notes. This is... Permissible so long as the standards of editorial policies are met in such situations, the matter should ordinarily be. I know it. I don't know what it's called, but I know it. (laughs) Quick song. I. My only so song. I believe. I believe. Yeah, I was Michael, Michael, you Michael, Michael yeah. yes. I believe the song is. Uh, it's by Amy Shark. Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and I believe it is. Everybody rise. Oh my god! Someone yell it absolutely out. Absolutely not. That person there. I said hi. Absolutely oh. correct. <laughs> I mean, such a massive and famous song. Mm -hmm. And I think Amy did an incredible job to turn the ABC's Binder of Rules into I Said Hi. Mm -hmm. And yet you out there saying everybody rise. Yeah, I was, (laughs) honestly, you were lucky I was conscious at that point in the night, to be honest. Also, Uh, yeah, anyway. Cock of Amy Shark uh, was a huge success and everyone agreed and it would have worked if, um, you know, we had some competitors who, um, you know, were a little better at the game, but... I will say um, it was huge thanks to Amy Shark um, for showing up and getting involved in what is quite possibly either the best or worst idea we've ever had. Uh, it was such a pleasure. And she was kind enough to stick around after Cockamamie Shark uh, and sing us a song. And so we said some, she said some very beautiful words as well, which we won't play now because they were too nice and um, it'll make us uncomfortable. Uh, so here is... Um, Amy Shark doing her new song, Can I Shower at Yours, live, acoustic, just her and her guitar at the Metro Theatre in Sydney for our farewell show just last week. From Amy Shark, Can I Shower at Yours, um, played live, just her and her guitar at our live show in Sydney last week. Uh, We really appreciate Amy doing that, even though um, it was a prank on me, but I think a prank in which uh, everyone realised that Lewis was right in the end. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone that, loves Lewis. And that cockamamie shark was a perfect idea. And, look, there are people texting in saying that game you played, cockamamie shark, um, seems to be a bit similar to the game Substitute from Spicks and Specs. Um, now, look, this was brought up several times at the live show. Mm-hmm. I disagree. Well, so <laughs> okay. I guess I guess two people can be right at the same time. You are entitled to your opinion. Uh-huh. I think it's very different. Interesting. Because all the songs for Cock of Amy Shark every week would be by Amy Shark. That's, yeah, I guess that would be slightly different. Yes. No, it would be very different. Um. <laughs> very different. Very, very different. They're not making Specs and Specs anymore, are they? I think they are still. Are they yeah. still making it? Yeah. New ones. I was on it last year, yeah. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Wowee. Um, 
Anyway, um, a huge you can't thank you. Get, you can't do copyright um, infringement within the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, a huge thank you to Amy Shark for coming to our live show and um, being a part of that. It was really lovely for her to do that, especially given the very busy week she had. Um, right now, though, this is Polaris. Your Triple J. That is Polaris on Triple J uh, with their track, uh, Inhumane, off the Fatalism album. Yo, with Hobber and Hing mm. and uh, Lewis. Yeah. We've got to get busy because we have a bucket list to cross some items off. That's right. Yeah, we, um, we're ticking them off, though. We're getting through them. Uh, one of the big ones is that we want to have statues of ourselves made uh, just, you know, so that people will remember us. No one will remember us for the good work we did or the bad work we did. Mm. So we need to have statues to make sure that we are never forgotten. Yes. So that the legacy of Hobber and Hing lives on for generations. Mm-hmm. Uh or, you know, a couple of weeks. So, uh, unfortunately, we didn't really get onto it. We've been talking about it for a few months, but we only really got onto it yesterday. Mm. Um, so we called up our friend Tank, who we met in Shepparton during our takeover. Um, he made a special cow for us when we visited, mm-hmm. asked him if he could whip something up in the next day. He said that's insane. They usually take about 18 months. Yeah. But that he would give it a go. He said he'd give it a go, and that's all we can ask. That's all we can ask. Uh, but now that we're definitely getting statues made, they're definitely going to be great. <laughs> Uh, we <laughs> want to know where could we or should we install them? Um, and I guess I'm open to any ideas. I mean, mm. we can get Tank to kind of ship them. I guess I guess he could send them to us or he could send them anywhere in Australia. Or France. Or France. The Louvre. The Louvre. <laughs> uh, he could also send them to the <laughs> Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Uh-huh. Um, but you're right. We should probably think yeah. uh, local, yeah. na- national, um, somewhere um, that is significant. To the Musée d'Orsay? I don't know. The Musée d'Orsay, okay, yeah, that's right. If the Louvre says no, we'll mm-hmm. play the Musée d'Orsay off against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, but assuming that the Mona Lisa is staying at the Louvre and they're not going to have any room for us, um, we might need to think of somewhere else. Mm. And look, maybe it's a gallery, mm-hmm. maybe it's a city or a town, maybe it's a football club, maybe it's... Uh, a backyard. Yeah. Really, we're taking any pictures at the moment. If you've got any ideas, 043975755, where could we install our um, statues that are definitely going to be made of us? Um, again, we haven't seen them. We don't know what they're going to look like. But, you know, get in touch. Let us know. Somewhere um, high profile, I think. Somewhere that, you know, with a bit with a bit of status, a bit, a bit of stature for the statues. Yeah. But, you know, I don't want to be um, in the middle of nowhere, you know, in the bush or something. Forgotten and ignored. I feel like that's kind of fitting for our show. I know, you know, but, you know. Just put us on. Just put us on the side of a highway somewhere in the desert. You know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But would I look? All right, that's on the list. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, oh four three nine seven five seven triple five. Um, if you have any other ideas, get them in. We're taking all pictures right now. This is Arno Faraji on the move. That is Arno Faraji on the move on Triple J. You are with Hobber and Hing, and we are looking for somewhere to put our statues that are definitely getting made. <laughs> now, if you're just joining us, uh, we have a bucket list of things we want to do. We are leaving on Thursday. Thursday is our final show. Mm. We have a bucket list of things we want to get done by then, and one of those things was get statues made of ourselves. Yeah. This just is something I think that you've really been pushing for, Lewis. Well, like you, you don't see a lot of radio hosts out there with statues. You know, you see a lot of footy mm. players... You see a lot of old mayors or... Generals, I think. Generals. Sometimes, yeah, colonialists. You never look around and go, oh, there they were, the world's um, top five rated drive hosts in their time. I guess, I guess, (laughs) I guess when I think of statues, especially in the last decade or so, mostly thinking about statues being torn down. Sure, but I look forward to that day. Well, when our statues are torn down. Toppled, yeah. Toppled. (laughs) When the new regime... When the revolution... By Abby and Tyrone. (laughs) That's right. They take over. And they put they put ropes around our necks and topple us <laughs> topple us from our plinth. They find us uh, <laughs> hiding in a hole in a rock or That's something. That's right. Saddam style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with our acacia of pornography. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, these are all these are the sorts of things that happen to you when you have a statue. You know, we don't really know. Yes. Um, what kind of life we could lead once there's statues of us made. Mm-hmm. I just think it could be a bit of fun. Okay, so we want to find out where we can put them. So uh, if you've got any suggestions, 043975-7555. Uh, Jed in Melbourne, you've gotten in touch. Uh, where do you think we could put our statues? To leave a lasting impression, Ida Butro's car park. <laughs> oh, now that is an ongoing feud yeah. between Michael and Ida. I love that idea. So uh, for those, again, just catching up, Ida Butros is the chair of the ABC board. She's sort of the big boss, the head honcho of the ABC. Mm-hmm. And uh, during lockdown, because she wasn't really coming into work all that often, into the building, I should say, she was still working but from home, I started parking in her spot 
And then when she came back to work, um, I would still park in a spot sometimes and then occasionally I'd get in trouble from security and Lewis would get a phone call from the managing director asking why his friend Michael was parking in Ida Buttrose's spot. Yeah. So I wonder if when we leave here, if we install our statues in our car, in Ida Buttrose's car park, Lewis. Here's what I like about it mm-hmm. is that obviously it means that you get the car park. Which uh-huh, is great. It's uh-huh. a win there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the thing is, Jed, the car parks in the ABC, they are rare as hen's teeth. They really are. And if, or if if all the other employees came down and saw that one car park was being taken up with I, those statues... I mean, those statues are getting toppled. <laughs> well, I have They're not lasting the week. Oh, I yes? have an important question. Yes? Can you hang it upside down so she can still park in there? Oh, there. oh so we, we attach it to the roof <laughs> like, a st- like a stalactite. <laughs> Car park stalactite <laughs> statue style. Oh, my oh, goodness. Wow. An anti-gravity statue. That's... Jed from Melbourne. That's incredible thinking. Um, I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's a it's a that's a definite possibility. Thank you, Huge Jed. Possibility. Uh, Tim from Sydney, you've joined us. Um, where do you think we could install our statues? Well, um, there are a couple of universities around that have old sandstone buildings with gargoyles on them. Maybe you could just sneak the statues up. Uh, with the gargoyles and hope no one's do, done counted in how many of them there are at the I, moment. I love this idea. Now, I, I went to the University of Sydney. I didn't graduate, but I went there for a while and they have gargoyles galore there. Do they? Yeah, there's, gar- there's a couple of buildings that have gargoyles around the quad. Some of them are gargoyles. Some of them are just like old sort of like, you know, Radio nuns presenters? or whatever, you know, eff- <laughs> uh, effigies of, you know, people or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, st- stone. What do they do? Keep away the... I think their bad. idea is to, is, to, is to scare away monsters and whatnot. <laughs> Evil spirits. Yeah. That's from back in the day. Is that day. right? I think nowadays it's mostly but, just decorative. Um, okay. Yeah, and 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 I guess if the, if the guys had not got a lot of time to make a good likeness, then maybe if it's a gargoyle, no one will really notice. Oh, it yes. idiot. Oh, well, if it, it fits right in. You're right. saying that we've given Tank so little time to make the statues that he could just churn out some gargoyles. Yep. Okay. No matter okay. what we look like. Yeah, that's pretty good. Add I don't some fangs mind and that. ears to it, yeah. Now, this might be a little bit safety conscious, uh-huh. but I worry about them falling down. You know what I mean? Hitting like, a budding student in yeah, the noggin. Yeah, like young medical student on track to cure cancer, yeah. crushed by toppled hobble, uh, Hobber and Hing statue. Yeah. Not a headline yeah. I want to be a part True. of. I guess I don't want any. I don't, I don't want any statue that I'm associated with to kill anyone. You know, it's so brave. Unless, I mean, unless they're bad. Let's get, oh. it, let's, let's get it installed somewhere where there's bad people. Russia. <laughs> let's get it installed the Kremlin. Wow. And hopefully it'll topple and kill Vladimir Putin. Okay. Peter, in Newcastle, the greatest city in the world, do you have any ideas? Afternoon, General. There's only one, there's only one place you've gone number one. Uh-huh. Oh, that's true. I oh. mean, not technically true, but y- yes. So um, you're saying... It's we, the place we've been number one the most often and the biggest. You're saying we should get them installed in Newcastle somewhere. Have you ever heard of Andrew Johns? <laughs> <laughs> is yes, okay. is there a big statue of... There'd, there'd be a statue of all the Johns family, wouldn't there? No, he's tried and everyone's wanted one there, but you could beat him to the punch. You're kidding me. There's no Matthew John. There's no Johns brother... A statue in Newcastle currently. I would have thought they would have made a statue of him skateboarding down the main street after winning the grand final or whatever. Of course. There's no, no Daniel Johns, no Andrew Johns, <laughs> no Matthew Johns. Okay. There is no Johns. Okay. So this if, is huge. If, if we were going to go to try and get these installed in Newcastle, I mean, you're a local there, Peter. Where are some, where are some places we could get, it, could get it installed? Well, there's only one place, and I'm thinking this weekend, Knights home game, out the front. <laughs> About 25,000 people on board. Oh, at the stadium? Oh, they're getting toppled yeah. so quick. <laughs> <laughs> they're not lasting the weekend. This is a great idea, though, Peter. All right, let's have a think about that because I feel like if we could if we could get in touch with the people of Newcastle, we're beloved in that city, Lewis. Yeah, it, might, it, it could be the only place we don't get toppled, although I would say if we... If, Can't. if the word gets out that we've... That we've tried to take on the Johns brothers in mm. Newcastle, mm. statue wise. I don't like our chances. Yeah, we, yeah, we could get hightailed out of there. But there is, um, like, we could just put a call into the big dogs. Like, what we do you put mean? a call into, you know, the Daniel big, Johns. Yeah, Daniel Johns or wh- whoever runs Newcastle at the moment. Which Johns brother's in charge? <laughs> Whoever it is, we could get in charge in in touch with someone in Newcastle and find out where the most prestigious place is that, but that is also safe from a toppling. All right, <laughs> I don't know, should we? 
We'll give that a go next. Yeah. Right now, this is Arlo Parks. You're Triple J. The Parks on Triple J with Blades. You are with Hopper and Hing. And if you're just joining us, we are looking for a place to put our statues that are definitely getting made by a definite artist whose name is Tank. He lives in Shepparton. <laughs> We've given him about 48 hours to do it. Uh, we kind of have to do this tomorrow, don't we? Because Thursday's our last day. Yeah. I guess we could try and do it on Thursday, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's a jam-packed kind of um, week for us. Yes. So we had a couple of suggestions. Someone suggested we put them up in a local university as gargoyles. Someone else suggesting we install them in the chair of the board at the ABC's car space, Arta Buttress's car space, as hanging from the roof so she can still <laughs> park there, stalactite style. Uh-huh. Um, but Peter from Newcastle, the greatest city in the world, suggested maybe we'd like to install them in our spiritual home, the place where we have ranked number one as a drive show there for many years, Lewis, and a yeah. place that we have frankly pandered to yes. for, I would say, two and a half years now, the city of Newcastle. And, uh, you know, he suggests we put it out the front of the stadium, but they just get toppled. Yeah, toppled. Yeah, toppled, toppled immediately. Um, so you wanted to put in a call to one of the big dogs of Newcastle. In fact, the biggest dog. I think but maybe the biggest dog. Um, we've been saving this card for a while. We yeah. we knew the number was around. Mm. Obviously, we've gone to the Knight Stadium. We've taken on the Newcastle Knight in a mascot battle. Um, but we've we've saved this call for when we needed it most. I think it's right now. We have on the line the Lord Mayor of the greatest city in the world, Newcastle, New Atali Nelms. Hello. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for being here. I, I'm, I'm unsure if you're familiar with the um, spiritual connection that our radio show has with your town, given that my, neither Michael Hing nor myself are actually from Newcastle. Wait, what? No. <laughs> I just assumed you were. Yeah, a lot given of people think that. that. Yeah, we no, love we you just, so much. <laughs> we just love it because um, we rated quite well there one time and so now we think it's um, pretty cool. And yeah. We, um, we love to panda, yeah, frankly. Yeah, one time at band camp you rated well. <laughs> exactly. And now it's uh, your spiritual home. Yeah. Yes. Well, so you're the, you're, you're the Lord Mayor of Newcastle, so you can you could maybe give us some tips. Um, well, I guess actually, first of all, do you think Newcastle, the city, would like some statues of Hobbiting potentially? Look, in my time as Lord Mayor, which is almost nine years, I've done one bronze statue, and that was of Australia's first female Lord Mayor, Joy Cummings. Okay, and it is a, sure. a beautiful city statue. Yeah. So, given it's the greatest city in the world, <laughs> according to uh, you two, uh-huh. I think we could accommodate. A statue of yeah. you two? What are we looking at here? Uh, well, give me a bit of a brief. We don't really know because we haven't seen it yet and the guy who's making them is in Shepparton. But <laughs> I reckon, just to be safe... An import from Victoria. I'm in New South Wales, you know. Yeah, we know. But we're, we're a Premier national station. State. Yeah, so we're yeah, everywhere. Right. But here's, here's uh, uh, just as an idea, yes. given that, that you're saying the only statue you've uh, unveiled, I guess, recently has been of... Uh, you know, the first female Lord Mayor in Sydney. I'm yes. oh, sorry, in, in Australia, which is, I think, very, a very well-meaning statue, a very a des- deserving statue. Maybe if we have statues, they should not be sort of in eyesight of that. Oh, yeah, Because I feel yeah, like yeah, you don't yeah, want to invite yeah. the comparison of someone who's actually achieved a lot of stuff yep. and done very well, broken ground, broken ground for everyone. That's right. And then have and her then, next to us. Oh, no, and then and then <laughs> and then have us next to her. You know, I think that could be maybe a bit impolitic. Sure. It could be it could be not the right location no. for a Hopper and Hing statue that has been made in a forty eight hour turnaround. <laughs> well, so how's that hour, quality control going? Forty eight hour including delivery. What so, about yeah, wow. so we're looking at about thirty six hours. What if we put them at the front of City Hall? I mean that's your that's kind of your digs, right? Oh, yeah. City Hall. You could let us do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well um, That sounded well, like a yes to me. City. Quite bold of me to ask, <laughs> frankly. It's a, it is the greatest city in the world, and I don't know if I've ever been introed on national radio as a big dog before. Well, so, uh, you, run, um, you run the greatest city in the world, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. a, it's a huge, yeah, it's a huge. <laughs> like the, um, chair, the chair of the UN. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, is, okay. that, are we, is our buttering would, up working? Otherwise, uh, is there anywhere else you can think that we could put them, maybe, where they won't get toppled? Is there anywhere that they'd be safe <laughs> from, to, from <laughs> a toppling? There, we're quite there worried about nowhere. toppling. There is nowhere that w- that would be safe given the throngs <laughs> of fans that follow both of you here. Sure, sure, but sure. we do have a wonderful museum and a wonderful Ooh. museum director that might be able to accommodate hey, these now, amazing statues. Big... How big are they? Are they big? We're not like sure. Size? <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Uh, but is this a serious offer? The museum. I've never... Uh, the idea of being in a museum is very tantalising. That That's sounds incredible. That sounds very official. What's what's the new what's the museum in Newcastle called? 
the Newcastle Museum. Oh, right. So that's, 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 that's what I'd have called it too. <laughs> what, yes. sort of, what sort of thing Look is in there, go. Lord Mayor? <laughs> Well, we have uh, lots of travelling exhibitions. We have, interestingly, a lot of silver chair memorabilia of and a course. lot of local memorabilia. Hello. We also have a nod to our industrial heritage, so we have a live interactive steel making display. Oh, steel we also city, have yeah. like a version of Questacon for children. And, I'm looking at some and photos like. here. It's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing museum. Yeah, I'm looking at some photos here. It looks pretty good. There's a big steam train there as well, Lewis. That's Hello. pretty exciting. All right. Well, I think... Um, so you if... want to be next to a big steam train. I mean, hey, <laughs> you're making a little boy's dream come true here, <laughs> Lord Mayor. <laughs> it is the greatest city in the world, so it I'm is. happy to accommodate our favourite drive host ever. Oh, my God. Um, Lord Mayor. Honestly, you look great at this politics thing. Can I just say, I feel great. I feel great too. Um, You've got my vote. I'm not from Newcastle and I can't vote. Um, But I will say um, this is huge news. This is huge. uh, Just to be clear, you know that we haven't seen them and we have no idea what they're going to look like. Look, I'm sure that they will look like the both of you. I'm assuming that the sculptor is working on that and the museum can accommodate so your fans can come and get photos with you at the museum and you're coming back to Newcastle in September. We are. We're doing a show. Yeah. Yeah. I love this So I think that, I think it's going to work considering we are the greatest greatest city city in the world. world. (laughs) We we, we, we believe it. Because I like this. Lord Mayor of Newcastle, um, I'm going to play the regal music that you deserve. I love this. Thank you so much. (laughs) Um, You're very welcome. We... As we said, we, we, we will probably come and visit you tomorrow, if that's okay. Yeah, I don't we'll, know what's on your schedule. We'll try and, yeah. Um, because, oh, wow, okay. Well, so, I, basically after tomorrow, yeah, we, we, can do that. we don't really have any time left. Yeah. It's so kind of tomorrow or Actually, bus. yeah, what are you, tomorrow morning, if we came to the Newcastle Museum, I mean, look, we'll have to make some phone calls, see if the, they'll have it, but if that works out, would you come to the, would you come to the museum with us and, and unveil the statues with us? Of course. I can shuffle some things around Thank for... You. I love this. Our favourite drive. I love this. I <laughs> love this, host. Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, thank you so much. This is huge. This is really, honestly, uh, this means the world to us. Um, thank you, and um, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you, Lord Mayor of Newcastle. He is Newcastle band right now. Trophy Eyes, what hurts the most? The greatest city in the world, Newcastle. <laughs> That is Trophy Eyes with What Hurts the Most. Um, and they're going to be playing this, that festival in November, but we'll be out of there by then. We'll be out of here by then. Mm-hmm. We'll be long mm-hmm. gone from that. And uh, frankly, I don't care because the only thing I care about right now is that you and I are going to get statues that are definitely being made and yes. definitely exist by a definite artist installed, <laughs> theoretically. I, it's so disconcerting. In a how museum it- in Newcastle. <laughs> You have to say definitely so many times that it makes me very worried. Yeah, it's definitely happening. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning we're going to Newcastle and we're going to try <laughs> get our statues <laughs> unveiled in front of the Lord Mayor. Oh, All right, that's I'm coming up. about it. This is now H with round two. You're on Triple J. Hover in here. The man who holds the world record for the lowest voice in the world. No. Give me the note again. No. Okay, here we go. Okay, the old perfect pitch is kicking in, is it? <laughs> You're nowhere near it. <laughs> On Triple J. Good afternoon. Yes, Lewis Hobber and Michael Hing with you. And uh, if you've just been joining us, we are on the way mm-hmm. to uh, hopefully ticking another item off the bucket list, Hingers. Um, having uh, statues made of ourselves, that is hopefully happening. Um, it should be happening. It might be happening. Michael reckons it's definitely happening, but we'll see. Now, one thing we have done is we just spoke to the Lord Mayor of Newcastle Mm -hmm. who has agreed to install them, if they do get made, in the Newcastle Museum. The Newcastle Museum. Now, Abby Butler, who's taking over from us, oh, yeah. uh, just came in here and was saying that uh, apparently, because she's a Newcastle local, actually, yes, she grew up she's in the greatest city in the world. Yeah. Um, she was saying that she's been to the Newcastle Museum quite a bit as a child. Oh, yeah. And she speaks very highly of it, said it was a great museum. Okay. So we could be, and, and I just looked up some photos, there's a steam train in there. We could be right near a steam train, Lewis, you know? Toot, toot. Toot, toot. Actually, that's true. That is like taking a little skipper with us. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're very excited about it. Um, we only have... After today... I, sorry, I just had a thought. Oh, yeah? What if they're terrible? No, nah, they'll be great. They'll be great. They're going to be really good. You've just considered that now. I just I just worry that if we if, if they suck and we are unveiling them in front of the Lord Mayor, I think it could go wrong for it. Anyway, look, it's fine. It's fine. We've only they're given... They're going to be great. They're going to be great. I'm we've only given Tank, like, 
a single day. Thinking to positively. They're going to be great. The Lord Mayor's going to love them. The city of Newcastle aren't going to topple them. These are not. These are non-toppable. <laughs> non-toppled. I think they're very toppable and I think you should prepare yourself for the fact that 24 hours is not long to make two statues of two people. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. All right. This is Genesis Awusu. We're tied up. You're Triple J hovering with you. That is Mo. 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 <laughs> I'm never going to get sick of saying that Mo. I mean that word. Mo. Uh, out of Denmark. Uh, who we recently beat in the World Cup, Lewis. Take, Take that, that, Denmark. Take that, Mo. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry, Mo. You're great. Um, live to survive. Before that, you heard Genesis Awusu with tied up! Exclamation uh, mark. You are with Hobber and Hing. And, Lewis, we are celebrating right now because the statues that we are definitely getting made <laughs> by a definite artist, Tank, in Shepparton. We have just got word from the Lord Mayor of Newcastle yes. that they can be installed in the Newcastle Museum. Cue the triumphant music. Oh, oh no, it doesn't matter. So, Never mind. No, we God, missed it. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I should have warned you. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you know what? We do have some people with some thoughts on this. Um, Annette from Geelong, you've called in. Your thoughts on this? Uh, the statues heading to Newcastle? I am so devastated You're at devastated. your betrayal. Mm. Your betrayal of the people of Geelong. <laughs> yeah. Look, Annette, here's the thing. Obviously, yeah, I went to school in Geelong. I grew up down the surf coast, you know, outside. I mean, I'm from a, you know, Geelong area. I lived in Geelong for many years. Um, but here's the thing, you know, I, we just, we were never number one in Geelong, you know what I mean? Geelong's got its own radio station, you know? <laughs> uh, we can't compete with K-Rock. What do you think we are? Made of money? We don't, we don't talk about the Geelong Football Club incessantly. We don't talk about how old Patrick Dangerfield's children are. I mean, I know. These are all Geelong references. Although recently we did talk quite a bit about a... I believe we talked quite a bit about... Oh, an the ballads. Ice, an ice cream... Oh, no, well, that's in Torquay. Oh, it's different Frenchies. to Geelong. Different to Geelong, is Dif- it? Well, yeah. I mean, see, this is, Annette, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with Michael Hing, a man who knows no facts about Geelong. Have I ever been to Geelong? Probably not. <laughs> I, this we is could a, pop you in the carousel and everyone could have a go round. We could go to the carousel. I could show you the bollards, Michael. I could show you. I could. We could walk the streets of my youth. Daniel from Ballarat is just texting, saying, "Have you, you guys have just completely given up, haven't you? How dare you, Daniel from Ballarat? Div- given up in what way? I think he's saying. I think he's saying that you know we're, we're not putting effort into this. Oh, we're getting statues installed in a new muse- museum in Newcastle, Daniel from Ballarat. Yeah, I'd like to see what happens when you give up, Daniel. Is this what giving up looks like? <laughs> Unbelievable, the nerve. And it, look, I will say this. Um, I'm sorry. Um, but also, you know, I, I, the last I heard, like we, we called the Lord Mayor of Newcastle to get this sorted. The last time I was in Geelong, the Mayor and all of the Council of Geelong were kicked out for being too inept. Have they yeah, replaced not, them yet? It's not far from the truth. <laughs> they, we, our Lord Mayor spent all his money on a giant floating Christmas tree. And he had fake abs and a pink mohawk. Yeah. And he was on Shark Tank. Is that the kind of thing we want to be associated with? I, I don't mean, think so. Kind of. <laughs> no, I actually maybe. do quite like the floating Christmas tree, but, you um, know, that's me. All right. Well, Annette, I'm very sorry that we've betrayed you like that. We've, um, you yeah. know, stabbed you in the back like Thank that. You, very, Annette. very sorry. Please don't um, hurt me when I'm home for Christmas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, forgive and forget. Forgive okay. and forget. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Sam from Newcastle has joined us. Sam, um, you're a Newcastle local. Um, you've got an idea. You, you, you think you can top museum. What? Yeah, well, who actually even goes to the museum? I don't think that's where your target audience is, mate. Interesting. <laughs> what, school children? <laughs> the elderly? <Yeah>. The unemployed? <laughs> where do you think private, we should? Primary schools, apparently. Mm-hmm. But I think Nobby's Beach, that way you look like the founders in Newcastle, the greatest city in the world. You Ooh. look like that is your little baby, the whole city. Nobby's is beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah, beach. Yeah, you could even put it at the end of the break wall and have the water spraying through your hair. Oh, lovely. That'd be great, Michael. You could be you could have the salt crusting your beautiful locks. You wanna have a you wanna have a water feature. My concern <laughs> yeah. is that it might look like we're getting pissed on. Is that is that a concern? <laughs> what a weird that is a concern anywhere in Newcastle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, um, now, also, uh, Sam, I noticed that you said you've um, you've you think you've got a duty uh, to this statue as a Novocastrian. Yeah, well, I think it's a university town, basically. Yeah. What do you do as a university student? Uh-huh. You walk around and you steal traffic cones. Right, like, sure. I feel like Hing's head's the next step. You want to steal oh, my head? A you heist? Want, you want to? <laughs> 
Uh, you want to you want to behead the Michael Hanks touch? You want to heist yeah. the heister? Honestly, Sam, you know, yeah. I respect it. I think that's really funny. <laughs> First Saddam and now Michael. Oh, honestly, that would be great. All right, good Sam. luck to you. Well, look, if you think you can heist it out of the museum, uh, if it gets in there, because they're definitely getting made. I, again, I can't stress enough how much we are not allowed to encourage crimes. But no, that no. being said, good no. luck to you. Yep. All right, <laughs> thanks, Sam. Maggie what? from Anna Bay, uh, what are your thoughts? I think it's a brilliant idea. I'll be taking my kids there. Um, any family that comes to visit, I'll be taking them there. And I think it will be an honour and a privilege, like it is talking to you guys now, an honour and a privilege oh, to have you guys statue in the, uh, in the museum. Wow. Well, Maggie, that's so kind 100%. of you. So you're saying you don't want to piss on them or topple them or <laughs> steal them? Well, I can't say that. Oh, okay. But, um, right. Okay, okay. Any chance for a museum heist? Okay, right. But, uh, yeah. uh, well, thank but, you. Um, that's I'm very much looking forward to seeing you guys. In I like well, the idea of you taking your family miss- to the museum <laughs> and then as a family you all piss on our statues. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea, actually. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we do have people pointing out you have no idea what they're going to look like and nor do we. Um, no, we so yeah. you could be yeah. prepared for the fact that they'll be two vaguely head-shaped or body-shaped <laughs> things. But honestly, I love this. I love yes. every part of this. Thank you, Maggie. That's no worries. Thank you. Right now, this is the Vans. We're thinking about the nights. Which is what we do every time we think about Newcastle. <laughs> the Johns Brothers, Kalen Ponga, all the nights. This is the van. On Triple J, thinking about the nights. And uh, Lewis, you and I are going to be thinking about the nights, as you said, um, because we are going to have our statues installed in the museum. Of Newcastle, the Newcastle Museum, Mm -hmm. uh, which has its own steam train. I don't know if it's a functioning (laughs) steam train, but, um, you know. I will say um, we are talking, I love the fact that you're talking about this like it's a done deal. Well, look, Um, we've done everything we can do. In well, that we've asked a person to make the statues. We're going to call Tank again to, I guess, ship them to Newcastle. Look, I don't know how it's going to work, but uh-huh. we've certainly declared it on national radio, which makes me think it's going to happen. Now, sure. that does open up a second question, though. So if we if we do this, right, then one of the only things left on our bucket list, in fact, I think after, if we do statues, right, yep. then the only thing left on our bucket list of things we have to achieve involves the chair of the board of the ABC, Ida Buttrose, uh, a living legend of Australian media and entertainment, yes. uh, publishing and whatnot, has, yeah. has you know, uh, I would say led the ABC through some very difficult times in the last couple of years, you know? Yes. And uh, has been a, a champion, I guess, for the ABC. I would say she hasn't really been a champion of our specific show because no. we've been in trouble with her. <laughs> now, someone suggested that we should install our statues in her car space, and then we we're like, we can't do that because then she can't park a car there. They then said, do it stalactite style from the top, <laughs> from the roof of the car, so she can still park a car in there. I worry about falling statues. Of course. And I now worry about killing yes. accidentally. Yeah, Australian legend. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, think that's a good vibe for us. Now, that does mean, though, Lewis, if, because our statues are now being theoretically installed in a museum in Newcastle, yeah. we still do need to sort out something to do with either Buttrose. Yes. So, because, uh, because, well, actually, she, she was angry at me because I kept parking in her spot. Yes. And you said you would deal with this. Yeah. Well, here's the th- if you got, I cast your mind back, what actually happened was that um, her grandson must listen to our show. So, hello to, um, you know, young but- yes. Mr. Buttrose. Yes, yes. Because uh, he kept snitching on us to her. He kept ca- he kept calling going, hey, Grandma, yeah. the boys are stealing your car park again. Yeah. And that's how she found out. Yeah. Um, so I don't think she listens that, that often. I don't believe so, no. Uh, I mean, maybe. If but she is listening, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, Chair. Um, and so Take care look, of your work. <laughs> I, and your park. Now, I will say that yeah, I did say I would do this. It has some sort of it slipped my mind. We've had a busy week. Yeah. Tomorrow, so, uh-huh. I'm putting a call in. You're going to call. I'm going to call the chair of the board. It's chair a, of the ABC board. It's not a. It's a. It's a number I have, but have never used. Okay. You know when you have those numbers where you're like, ah, oh, I only want to use this when I really need it. Yeah, yeah. For me, triple zero. I know it, but I only want to use it when I absolutely have to. That's smart. Um, so tomorrow on the show, you'll call Ida Butros, or maybe we can't put her live to air. I think I might need to call her beforehand because okay. I don't know how much sweet talking I have to do. I don't know how genuinely angry she is at you. Yeah, and then what's your – what are you going to pitch for her? What Do you, you want to share what your pitch is? Or? Well, do you know what, I th- what I'm thinking? Okay. Call me if this is crazy. Uh-huh. I'm just going to ask for what we want. Can I have her spot? Yeah. Can Michael Hing have Ida Butros' car spot? Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> – I'm going to look her right in the eye. Here we go. 
And just ask for it. Just ask. I mean, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. You don't ask, you don't get. Okay, so tomorrow on the show, uh, Lewis look, Hopper is going to call the chair of the board of the yeah. ABC, Ida Buttrose. Yeah. We've got two days left at work. Yep. And he's going to ask, again, Ida Buttrose, living publishing legend and broadcasting legend of Australian television. Yes. Can Michael Lee have your cast base? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a reasonable request. Yeah. Don't you reckon? I mean, obviously I think it's reasonable. Yeah. I've been parking in a spot this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think it's. I think we're just gonna go. We're just gonna run straight at this one. Yeah, yeah. And and we've do done. Have, we've done so many loopholes. Have, loop you, got, have in you, our you got any list. other? Have, have you got, got a backup plan? A ba- well, I well, just backup I, plan. I guess we steal it. My concern is that she just says no, and then what do we do? Then we then then get we my, get a little sign made, put a plaque we, over her. Yeah, or something. exactly. Yeah, then we just have to steal it. <laughs> so, but we give her a chance to say no. Hack is up next. I hope Ida wasn't listening to that. Or no one snitched. If, no one snitched yeah, to Ida. If, you, if Mr. Young Mr. Buttrose is, uh, Young yeah. Master Buttrose is listening, yes. zip it. Zip it, all right? We don't need any of the, no leaks. Hack is up next. Uh, they're going to be talking about the climate crisis, a big trip, and uh, whether or not you are giving too much information to Rent Tech Online. That's all coming up after this from Baby Gravy. Baby gravy, goodness gracious. You're on Triple J with Hobber and Hing. We are handing over right now to Dave Marchese and the hack team. Dave, what's coming up today? We got such an interesting story coming up. A 22-year-old explorer who's about to kickstart an incredible two-year journey through some of the most remote places in the world. And he's doing it with his dad, who is also a world-famous explorer who has all these Guinness World Records that he's achieved. Mm. And they're doing it for an interesting reason. They're trying to kind of raise awareness of adventuring in a sustainable way and how, you know, people in the past when they've done this kind of exploring, it's all, it's always been really uh, missions intensive or whatever, mm. but they're trying to change all that up. Okay. So we've got that chat coming up. We're also talking about rent tech privacy, those rental uh, apps where you have to put all your personal information into them when you're applying for properties. What's going on with privacy there? So we'll get into that as well. Thanks, Dave. See ya. (laughs) 